In this video, I'm going to talk about sample selection corrections and the truncated regression that we saw in the previous video. It was a special case of a general problem, which is known as a non-random sample selection. So, for example, in the case of wage offer function for labor economics, we may be interested in knowing the impact of various factors on wages. Those factors could include education, experience, marital status, etc. But the problem is we only observe data for the variable wages for the people those are actually working and who have accepted a job offer. And we do not observe data for the people those are not working. So those people are systematically excluded from our data. And remember, whenever we omit subpopulation from our sample, our sample is no more random and OLS is not the best estimator. To give you an intuition behind sample selection, I'm going to give you an example. And this example is from the World War II. When the British planes were coming back from Germany, they observed that uh, the planes have bullet holes on uh, these places. So they decided to add an expensive armor on these parts of the plane. But when an economist, Abraham Wall, looked at uh, these planes. He immediately knew what was going on and he said, actually, this is completely the opposite that they should be doing. They should be adding armor on these parts of the plane. Why? Because of uh, the problem of sample selection. Only the planes, those were not hit in these parts, uh, were coming back to Britain. Hence, they added uh, the armor on uh, this part of the plane. So this is exactly what is the intuition behind uh, sample selection. We have data only about uh, the observations that we observe, but the observations that we do not observe, those are omitted uh, from our analysis. To correct for this, what we do in the first stage, we regress a probit model to know, for example, what is the probability of uh, these planes returning. And from this, we calculate what we call inverse Mills ratio or lambda hat. And in the second stage, we regress our y variable on x1, x2, etc. and this lambda hat. And we test our null hypothesis that whether this lambda hat equal to zero. If we fail to reject this null hypothesis, it implies no sample selection. On the other hand, if we reject this null hypothesis, which means lambda or this inverse Mills ratio is having some impact on our variable and uh, there is a problem of uh, sample selection in our model. Let me show you an example of applying Heckman selection model to correct for this sample selection bias. Okay, so we are in R. And I'm going to use this data set M rows that we have seen multiple times. I'm going to attach this data set. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to regress uh, log wages on education, experience, and uh, experience square of uh, the working woman in this uh, sample. Now I'm going to apply the segment two step selection model. And in the first step, I'm going to calculate a probit model of the probability of a woman being in the labor force. So my first dependent variable will be the probability of uh, being in the labor force. And in this case, it's a binary variable which takes on a value of zero and one. And I'm gonna regress uh, this variable on a bunch of uh, explanatory variables, which we think are explaining the decision of a woman to be in the labor force. So remember, by calculating this probit model, we are calculating these probabilities, and then we are calculating our inverse Mills ratio. So this is our main equation log of wages on education and a quadratic function of uh, experience. And uh, the method I'm going to use is a two-step model. And I'm going to pass all these arguments to this selection function, which is from this library sample selection. So let's suggest this model and uh, look at the results. So looking at the slope coefficients, we see that there's no significant differences between OLS slope coefficients and uh, the Heckman selection model coefficients and their statistical significance. They are almost identical across these two estimators. Next, I'm going to use some recommend on my saved Heckman selection model to look at uh, 
the inverse Mills ratio. And remember, our null hypothesis is that this inverse Mills ratio is equal to zero. That is, there is no sample selection problem. And uh, we are rejecting this null hypothesis at 80% and the p-value is about 0 0.24, which means uh, we fail to reject this null hypothesis and there is no sample selection problem in this data set. So this is how you correct for the sample selection problem by using two-step Heckman selection model. And in the first step, you regress uh, a probit model. And then in the next uh, step, you regress your main equation. The important thing is to look for this inverse Mills ratio and uh, see whether there is sample selection bias.